sugar. Just keep on going in that fucking little circle, never fucking stopping, never fucking stopping. There are times where being patient doesn't pay off worth the fucking shit. There's a lot of times. But I have to be patient. Throughout the, in the eternity, I have to be patient. That's the best part of being insane because basically, any given moment of being patient, you can fucking snap. And no one would ever suspect it. You could be in a crowded area being very patient, waiting f for that one thing to happen. And then all of a sudden, like a twig snap, poof, it just goes. And then you go ballistic, you go on a fucking rampage, you start beating the shit out of people for no apparent reason. Because your patience is growing and wearing thin. And you just go completely fucking insane. You've waited for fucking hours for something good to fucking happen while waiting, patiently. And then all of a sudden, boom, like an explosion, like a mushroom cloud, like an atomic fucking goddamn bomb for the first time viewing in 50s New Mexico. Just like that. Everything gone. Everything goes silent when you're snapping and going on a fucking rampage. Blood's everywhere. Bodies are fucking broken. Arms are broken. Fingers are broken. Kids are crying. But you're smiling while you're doing this. To be patient is to be insane. It's typical for me. I fucking goddamn snapped. Growing patient for an hour and then just all of a sudden whole fucking goddamn crowd, music fucking blaring. I'm drinking my beer, drinking my beer, patiently, and then all of a sudden you get some little fucking dick smack slamming into you, and it's like, okay, that's cool. Growing patient, growing patient. And then the insane part comes. Second time around, then six people had to fucking rip my goddamn ass off. Interesting. Everything gone. Everything goes silent when you're snapping or going on a fucking rampage. Bloods everywhere. Bodies are fucking broken. Arms are broken. Fingers are broken. Kids are crying. But you're smiling while you're doing it. That a madman that likes his beer gets it spilled. But like I said, to be patient is to be insane. You have to wait for that savory moment to just fucking snap. It's fun. For normal people, it fucking sucks. Have you ever sat down patiently with a normal person? You just want to fucking choke them. You just want to fucking Have choke the bastard. Because you're so fucking utterly normal. You just want to choke them. You just want to totally die. I hate people like that. That's what grows my You just want to choke them. Normal goddamn people just sitting there. Just being happy. And you just want to smack them and choke them. And... But it's wrong because you'll get arrested for it because you would be a murderer. But... To be patient is to be insane. It's amazing. Well, what one man has to do just sit in a thinking patiently. That's alright, fucking psychotic. It's fun because a lot of people don't realize what the hell goes through a person like me goes through his fucking goddamn head. He doesn't. People don't. It's a sad fucking goddamn faction. It's just horrible. Because a lot of people ask me, well, how can you think of such atrocities and horribleness in the world? And how can you think of so many great topics? Very simple. You just don't fucking think and you just wait patiently because I'm insane. Do I have to write it out for the retards? I think so. I don't know. It's a sad, sad fact that you have to write it out to explain to them why you're patient and why you're insane. Don't fucking goddamn get it. Never have, never will. But to be patient is to be insane. Follows me through through the rest of my mother fucking life. It will. And I'll be proud to say that. They'll follow me till I die. Yep. Till I die. Be patient. Okay. End of thing. But to be patient should be insane. 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 But
represent orchids and calla lilies for, for over a hundred years. Morticians have been using these beautiful, sweet smelling flowers for years. And it's amazing because that's all you fucking goddamn see is calla lilies and orchids. Orchids and calla lilies. They're placed amongst the dead to actually represent like a sweet solitude. I think they're beautiful because it's like it gives a haunting presence to an already dark and dismal funeral parlor. And I've been through a lot of funeral parlors. I mean, there's a lot of beautiful ones, a lot of creepy ones. I mean, last one I was at was my grandfather's and it was really weird because it was like this, this cross of Jesus. And it was so fully detailed, like he was raised and seen and he's like little cherub angels. And it was, like I said, orchids and calla lilies. It made it like really more haunting because you feel like looking at this and you're listening to music. Like, oh, what like, the oh, hell was that? I, I can't even remember how it was. I, I like, can't even remember the everything. It was like choir, choir like very choir like music. numbers. Really beautiful. Numbers. She's really beautiful, really cheerful. I mean, I usually don't cry at my father, but I am my grandfather. I am just like down, you know. And she's just like looking up and then he's never staring at the flowers of the room. Because I can give the heart to you. Like I said, for over a hundred years, most morticians are yellow, early orchids and yellow. I mean, have orchids and yellow candles in their own caskets. Like a haunty zombie. Like a haunty zombie. No matter how the man or how the man is. Death flowers always look beautiful. Screw the 
but if you have them, it just looks like, basically, like, what it should be. Like, you know where the hell you're going. Heaven or hell. And I, I think the more, I think the mortician, when they put the flowers up, I think them. And they're scratching their head like, well, this is our job. Yeah, but mortician have a bitch to do to make it look presentable, even in death. They make it look presentable. And I honor that. I mean, usually most morticians don't have that fucking condition. Unless you're old school and you live in, like, where I live. It's like an old school tradition. They have those type of flowers. And if they can't find them, they have to go down to Chicago. And that's a bitch. Because usually most floors don't have them. And then you have the special room for Madison or Milwaukee. Or even parts unknown. And then have them shipped. Then you look at the bill. Christ, it's more than a damn casket. It's more than a damn casket. But people never fully realize that or that the Galileans always represent death in a beautiful, sonic way. No, I'm not getting all fucking goddamn mushy about it, but the way I look at it is it always represents how beautiful death can be if you have those type of flowers. If you have roses, it's gonna make you look like a pompous little ass. I'm sorry, I don't like roses at a funeral. It just makes you look like you're at the Kentucky Derby and you just had a winning horse or you're riding a winning horse. And what does he have around his fucking neck? Roses! Who in the fuck needs roses for a damn horse? That's the way I look at it. I always like the representation of the death flowers. And a lot of my friends found it really weird that, how can you represent orchids and cowboys as death flowers? I said, over a hundred years. They've been doing that. They've been making it look like the person should look like a million bucks, even with these flowers. You got the best pinstripe suit, but with the flowers, it makes you look even more richer. That's how I see it. This somber solitude, it gives you a peace of mind that when you walk in the funeral parlor, you see these cowboys, you see these orchids. It gives you that sweet smell and a good sight of relief that you know the person is in a better place. With roses, no, it doesn't. It gives you like that, that heart sickness that basically it gives you really bad heartburn. You have to take like continuous quantity amounts of Pepto-Bismol to, to get that heartburn away. And that's the way, I mean, when I look at those flowers, it's just, I, I've seen them and they're beautiful. Hard to get, but they're beautiful. And it's a good representation of death. I mean, wouldn't you want that? Wouldn't you want a good representation of death with flowers? Especially orchids and calla lilies and stuff roses. Or tulips. We're not in fucking Holland, okay? Unless you're Dutch. Well, you can't disrespect Dutch people, but... Tulips in a funeral parlor. No, no, no. It just... It doesn't really fucking click. It doesn't. It doesn't give you that, that really good attitude towards how you're going to perceive your own death. Thank you.